Welcome to this short video outlining the responsibilities of a pennant side manager. My name is Peter Harris and I am the competition and talent development manager at Bowls WA. We've been asked to make a number of these short videos to uh, simply explain some of the voluntary positions and what your responsibilities are and of course today as you can see the responsibilities of a pennant side manager are really important not necessarily a sought after position within the club. So let's uh, quickly go through. So just some general information, I'm not going to necessarily go through it all. Uh, I've outlined here what page in the officials handbook that you can find this information. So uh, if you want to have a good read, all the clubs have their handbooks and they're also, it's on the uh, Bowls WA website which I'll show you shortly. So side manager responsibilities, just remembering not every club has the same responsibilities for their managers. Some have more, some have uh, less. Uh, some of these jobs that I'm going to go through, maybe the the chairperson of the selectors might do a couple of them, uh, and various people within the club may do them. So, but you should also you should still be aware as the side manager of what goes on and what needs to be done by somebody. So responsibilities, uh, know what your general conditions are. Again, I will go through quickly that. Uh, record the players' names the division colour, the rink numbers and everything on the scorecards before the game, uh, the pennant result sheet, we'll have a quick look, uh, the rink draw, I'll have a quick look to show you where that is, rule 20 in the general conditions, so you can see it right here, right below us here, I've put it down here, and ensure pennant results are inputted on the uh, website, which may not be your responsibility, but again we'll have a quick look at that. So the rink draw, page 28, uh, please make sure if you haven't done it before know what uh, you're doing uh, know what the opposition manager is going to ask you to do uh, you certainly I'm sure they wouldn't be taking advantage of you but make sure that you know what the uh, procedures are and the last one on the general information again completion of the pennant returns and inputting results again page 28 of the handbook uh, go through that I'm just going to go through one of the the pennant result form that everyone has seen around the place just very quickly anyway but there are the rules and what needs information needs to go on that form so we'll just quickly go through a quick checklist just so everyone knows uh, what jobs they need to be doing so the pennant result before the game there's the pennant result sheet I'm sure everyone's seen one Home team has the pennant result sheet, they provide them, so if you're the away team manager you don't need it. Home side manager, make sure you put all your names in there plenty of time. Really important thing is the umpire of the day, especially if there are any protests or things that we need to look at as Bowls WA, we get uh, complaints later on. We need to know who that umpire of the day is. Your visiting side manager needs to know who should know who that umpire of the day is. So please, as the home side, make sure that umpire of the day information is filled in. So before the game, as we said, home side puts theirs, you do the card draw, visiting side, then puts theirs to match the uh, the skippers. Uh, pretty elementary. Pennant cards, again, we'll quickly go through that. Very elementary, home side puts their teams in, away team, put your sides in before you leave the club. Make sure you take them with you, don't forget them. Uh, and again, make sure you put your teams in before you leave and just in case your memory is not that good. Pennant stickers, very quickly responsibility, that is the home team's responsibility. Uh, as the home uh, manager, don't get caught with a last minute person asking for stickers and you're not quite sure where they are. Pennant result sheet after the game, and we're going to make this fly pretty quick. Home team, put the scores in according to their cards. Add all the scores up, add all the points up, give the sheet to the away team so they can check with their cards to make sure their scores match 99.9% .9 on time. I'm sure they do, but just make sure the away team uh, matches. Both managers need to sign the, the sheet. And if something happens during the day, it's usually a weather thing, maybe it's an umpiring decision that's gone against you. If you intend to protest, maybe it's the Greens that you're not happy with, if you intend to make a protest, you must tick this box. You still sign the visiting or the home side 
side. Both managers still need to sign it, but you need to tick this box at that point in time. Don't try and tick it afterwards or say you're going to make a protest afterwards if you haven't ticked this box. And we'll go through the procedures of, of protest for the managers uh, in a couple of minutes. Bowls link results. Uh, you may not be responsible for the bowls link results as the home team. Just make sure the person who is responsible gets that pennant sheet so they can put it up correctly. And that's where the importance of having the names on the pennant result sheet are correct. Surnames and first names. Don't do nicknames. Just make sure the correct names are in the correct position so the bowls link person doesn't have to uh, work out who you're talking about when you put your names in. And the opposition doesn't have to know when they check the results. You don't no longer have to confirm the results, but you do still should be checking the results to make sure that the person putting the results in has got it correctly. Um, as we know, the number one complaint in recent years, since we've been doing this bowls link and you've been doing it, is the skippers are not aligned and my team won, and the bowls link shows my team lost. So just make sure you get that uh, uh, the alignment correctly. So the quick check checklist, pennant result sheet before the game is the home team's responsibility really. Pennant cards do the draw, then the pennant result sheet is the away team to put theirs, team names against the uh, uh, the home team, pennant stickers home team. Result sheet, make sure scores add up, make sure you sign it, make sure you tick the box if you're planning to protest, and bowls link results, make sure the person responsible for, in, put, for putting those results in actually gets the sheet. Just quickly, the general conditions and the rules that you should be aware of. Uh, you don't, not necessarily responsible for these, but you should certainly be aware of them. Rescheduling games, if uh, a lot of times it is the chair of the selectors that does this process or someone else in your club, but if you're asked, to do this there is a form and I'll show you where that is in a minute but page 23 usually when there's not enough green space uh, for whatever reason and you need to switch a fixture with your opponent there is a form that you need to fill in and sign and both the opposition need to sign it as well so we know that you've got an agreement you send it in to us so we can switch the fixtures on bowls link. Abandonment, delay or interrupted game again this is the umpire of the day's responsibility but you as a manager do have a role to play within that with a consultation so just know what your role is uh, again the umpire of the day will make the final decision but know what what information you can give and uh, make sure the umpire of the day consults with you correctly Forfeiting, again this may be the selector's responsibility if you're going to forfeit, uh, make sure you tell the opposition in plenty of time or uh, hopefully you'll get that information if the opposition forfeit to you. Open gender pennant rules have changed, well the open gender pennant rules are new, uh, they're in um, the same with cross gender pennant rules, they go hand in hand depending on what divisions, you should know what those rules are in case the opposition turn up. Uh, in the open gender rules now, the opposite gender can skip, so you need to know those rules in case your players don't, and you can put them right about what they can and can't do in your team, and can and can't do in the opposition to save any arguments. So at least be across of what these open gender and what this cross gender rules are. Again, again substitutes and playing short. If you suddenly have someone take sick, know how you play short in what uh, configuration you play, you have to play two bowls short. The rules have changed over the last few years, back and forth a couple of times, but it currently sits that you do play three players and you play two bowls short, so just make sure you know how that works. And procedures and forms. Protest procedures for pennant competition, so that's really against the umpire of the day. Generally, if uh, they have stopped play for some reason and you don't agree, as long as you've ticked that box on the uh, pennant result sheet, uh, there are procedures for you to go through. And same for the procedures of a substandard green, which is on the next page. All these forms generally have to be in midday, the next working day. So we will go have a quick look at them. 
take us to the website if you don't have a handbook or your club can't get you a handbook or we do have some spares, spares in the office quite uh, often so let us know and you might be able to pick one up but it's also uh, there and you can and you can read it through that but where we're going now is club forms for the forms that you need there's the alteration dependent fixture form you need to complete that and send it in to us get the opposition to sign it Green's protest form you need to fill this in as the manager you need to give your reasons of why you're protesting I would ignore the mail section we might take that off uh, but it currently is on the form uh, if you send it in the mail it won't reach us by the midday of the next working day so uh, ignore that one but get it into us uh, as I say it must be lodged before noon on the next working day and the last one if you don't want to protest you don't want points swapped you might have won the game but it was still a bad green uh, don't just ignore it our, our volunteer green inspectors do inspect in October but they don't in, they don't inspect all year round we rely on clubs telling us when a green may be suspect so the notice of concern there's no point swapped so you won't feel guilty about taking clubs points off them if you're beaten just beaten by a better team on the day but if the green isn't very good uh, you do need to bring it to our attention so we can talk to the club and and talk to them how we're going to rectify the situation so it's better for their members and the members of other clubs that are going to go there in the future so that brings us to the end of the responsibilities hopefully that it helps you have a stress free, free managers year wishing you all the best for the current season